I mentioned one characteristic of OT systems redundancy, um, which is a ubiquitous technique for boosting system integrity when availability is, is, uh, has to take precedence. Another best practice technique is the use of what's called the Purdue model for network segmentation and design. If you look around for Purdue model, you'll actually find um, you know, some variations of, of implementation, mostly because it's been around for, for a good long time. And it's, it's part of some standards like ISA 99. Um, and you'll find pictures that look similar, but maybe not exactly like this one. But generally speaking, um, it's, it's kind of the same idea through all of them. There's a lower level, um, where it, the lower level where the OT devices like PLCs and RTUs reside, and that's called a control network. That's our level one. Sometimes you'll see a level zero, which has sensors like pressure sensors and temperature sensors and things like that at a level zero. The servers and the super, excuse me, the supervisory OT devices, which interact with the RTUs, the things in level one, those live in level two, and that's called the supervisory network. Above that in layer level three is where higher function servers like data historians and network services, authentication services like domain controllers or, or other authentication servers, they live in there. And then level four is a corporate network, which is really outside of the control system itself, but is often a consumer of the control system um, data or, or you know, provides a higher level inf input. The basis of the segmentation is that the devices in each one of these layers only interact with each other or devices in the layer directly above, but nothing else. Um, that way of, of, of segmenting things and, and managing con, uh, con, uh, connections, it does two things. First, strong and simple firewall implementations can separate each layer and provide a tremendous degree of protection from network attacks. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a cough here. Uh, second, the traffic between the layers becomes very simple and very predictable, which makes analysis and anomaly detection much more effective and much more achievable. Uh, I'll point out in recent years, uh, the increase in wireless technologies and, and plus new smart devices is really bending the Purdue model uh, quite a bit in some ways. You have situations now where smart devices might live in level one or even below, and they may perform their function well within the bounds of the traditional Purdue model, but at the same time, they may send diagnostic information wirelessly or by Bluetooth or some, you know, some other technology. They may send diagnostic information about themselves directly to a level four system or even a cloud system. Um, for predictive maintenance, maybe, for example. People generally agree that the Purdue model still has value and significance, but it is known that more complex network scenarios and new types of connectivity are, are necessarily are gonna exist and they have to be taken into consideration. <clears throat> 